We Talk Movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network and producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, and Phil Svitek, this is I Talk Movies. Long form interviews with leading members of the film industry. And now, your host of I Talk Movies. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of Popcorn Talks, I Talk Movies. I'm your host, Keaton Markey, and today I am with three very awesome guys. Thank you. Uh, they are all the, well, producer, stars, director of the new movie, Bad Roomies. Welcome, guys. Thank you for, Thank having, you for, having, us. for having us. Okay, so let's go down and just do intros really quick, everybody. Okay. Go. Sure, I'm Tommy Savis. I am uh, one of the actors and producers of Bad Roomies. And I am Patrick Renna, and I also am an actor and producer of Bad Roomies. That's right. Is that how we're calling it? That's, the, that's Bad, Bad Roomies. Well, it is an international release, so <laughs> yeah, in France, right. the title's actually <laughs> Bad, Bad Roomies. Roomies. Yeah. Roomies. And I am Jason Schnell, the director and production assistant of Bad <laughs> Bad yeah. <laughs> wow, you yeah. yeah, that's a weird. He, yeah, I mean, dual on this one. He can get a mean coffee. Yeah, wow. he can get a mean coffee. You I keep this set quiet. Yeah. It was great. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody knows what a production assistant does, wow, that's that's doing a lot it's of impressive. work. That's yeah. impressive. Very impressive. Yes. As a director. So first of all, this is you guys' first film that you guys have produced as a team, that's correct? Right. Yeah. As, so have you produced anything not as a team? Um, I produced. Uh, Jason Schnell has a uh, uh, YouTube channel called Reckless Tortuga that mm -hmm. has over 1.1 million subscribers. Yes, it and does. over wow. how many hundreds of millions of views? Over 300, 400. Oh, we're about to hit 300 million. 300 views. million views. So it's a pretty big deal. Um, but I've produced. <laughs> right I've produced some content um, with them over the years, and mm -hmm. me and Pat have also produced some short films together over the years. So we've all worked with each other, and Jason and Pat have produced short films. So we've all worked with each other in different ways. But as a feature film, this is my first feature film I've produced. Mm -hmm. What about you? He doesn't know, but Jason and I did another film together. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out it's Christmas coming out 2016. It's actually coming out the same day this one is. So wow. uh, no, no, no. We, this, this is definitely our first uh, Big Boys Club movie altogether. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, it's funny though, because like Jason's a first time director for a feature, but as far as first time directors, he's about as non first time. Because I mean, how many short, how, how much, how much linear footage have you shot? Uh, it's I'd probably more than most seasoned directors. At this point, linear footage, because it's all narrative, yeah. like sketches mm -hmm. and web series and stuff, I would say probably in the like neighborhood of like 25 hours yeah. of scripted yeah. That's content. more than some directors yeah. do their entire career. Yes. So. yes. so we were lucky. But first time directors is loosely first. used for this man. Well, yeah, it, it still was a bit, my first time, and believe me, I learned a lot making this movie. So, well, we're and about, hopefully you like it, so we're not all last time directors. Yeah, I don't yeah. yeah. want to be the last time Whoops. director. <laughs> Just ignore him, guys. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> there is a man in here with us. He's too good looking to ignore. Get out of here, dude. <laughs> so, uh, your first film, tell, like, how did this process kind of come about? Like, did you guys find the script? Did you sit down and write the script? Did one person, like, what? Fill me in on how it's it It's all his starts. fault. It's I all know, your fault. Okay, so we can blame you. Uh, I think the way, like Tommy had said, we all had worked together in the past, and so we knew. I think we always knew we wanted to do something like this. It just, the opportunity never presented itself. Uh, so we got together and said, you know, eventually, I don't really know what was the impetus for getting over our lack of hard work to actually accomplish something. But we, I think you just, somehow woke, up, you we just woke up one morning, one morning and, and, and said, we yeah. got to make a movie. Yeah. Rally the troops. And that, <laughs> I, I don't know what brought it to that, but then we got together and another, another guy, Justin Mooney, wrote it. And uh, we... It was funny because we, you know, we did the, a little bit of the Kickstarter and got some of the money, and then we got an executive producer, and this was all kind of mm -hmm. before we even had a script. So yeah, that's we really? kinda, yeah, we did it they all backwards. They just believed in you guys. Well, that was an interesting story. Yeah, we had ideas. Yeah, like, yeah. We put out yeah. on Kickstarter. We, mm -hmm. you know, we had ideas, but it wasn't fully, wasn't fleshed, fully out. fleshed out. Like this, so. literally, the script that we wound up producing was the third or fourth script that we had written to make a movie. Yeah. Wow. The first one I think was about zombies <laughs> or something. Yes, it was. Zombies are there was so a, there was a zombie. Yeah. I know, exactly. I'm glad you didn't do that one. Although Glenn's back, guys. Didn't okay, you thank you for spoiling that. Yet. Oh, thank no. you. Oh, no. No. you son of a bitch! <laughs> well, you gotta watch when it comes out. <laughs> Motherfuck! <laughs> wow. I literally have been holding out for that. Can we swear Wait, on you this? You can curse you, on you this, know, right? Because if you can't, disclaimer before. Yeah, because uh, if you can, this interview is over and I'm leaving. <laughs> I can't believe um, it. Glenn's back. Hold on a second. You know. Oh. 
Anyway, oh. about bad roomies, not Walking Dead. <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving I mean, you knew he was fine. Well, I had my theories, but then I was going back, not to get off topic, Let's but we're get going off to topic. No, this is important. I was, this I was watching. Part of your process. It was. Yes. <laughs> you should see when we write scripts together. Well, listen, I had my theories of what happened, right? So I kept going back and watching, and then I went back like a week ago to like test my theories out again, which is like the guy fell on top of Glenn, those aren't his guts, and I watched it, and no, that's Glenn getting eaten alive. No, you'll so, see. Well, obviously, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the point we'll was, see. I, I I came to terms with the fact that said Glenn is dead, it's, yeah. and I'm going to move forward. It's and right then, at the beginning of the episode. <sighs> that doesn't make it any better. No. That's no. Well, it's, how long has it been since that episode aired? Last night. Yeah, yeah. that's not fair. That's, that's not fair. Not fair. You, have give, <laughs> you have to give. You have to give one full at week. At least one, one full week. week is what I said. Oh, it's brutal. Hashtag I've been avoiding spoiler my, alert. My Twitter what? feed, Ten avoiding you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Don't, don't even, even go watch on Walking Dead. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> do you? Do you really? I yes, am I so do. sorry. <laughs> Disclaim that. Forget the language. Yeah, Disclaim that. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so one of the most interesting things I think that's awesome about this film in particular is that you guys did use a Kickstarter. Yeah. A lot of people are like, I'm gonna make a movie. I'm gonna use a Kickstarter. Yeah. I'm never gonna raise the money. Or all the family <laughs> members is like, stop asking me for money. <laughs> yes. Uh, how was that yeah. process? And how did you do that Just and like raise that. all the money? Just just like, Just that. like that. But Pretty you did much. it before you even had the script. Yeah, we had the we, no, we had the script. We, we had the script. loose version of the script. Yeah, at that point. It was I, when like, I say that, I mean we had general ideas, but it, we also then had to fully flesh it out and actually write yeah. a movie script. It was in the incubator like, phase. Yeah, we did mm-hmm. have the idea that we were going to be roommates, and you know we we did have general ideas, but mm-hmm. it was all the whole process was a bit backwards. Yeah. You know? Jay, you talk about Kickstarter because yeah. you yeah, I mean Kickstarter's k- Kickstarter's a great platform. It is, uh, and it and I think do you if, have to say that. No, okay. no, I, I actually Just do. Joking. I think it's Kickstarter a great platform. Kickstarter is wonderful. This podcast has been <laughs> sponsored in part by Kickstarter. <laughs> I joking. think it's a great platform. I think it's a great platform for very specific things. For feature films, I'm not sure if it's the best platform for a feature film, just on the basis that there are certain things in the way that it's set up um, that I think is more geared towards like invention and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think when you look at Kickstarter, it definitely has performed better in those categories. Mm-hmm. We were very fortunate to get our Kickstarter funded, yeah. and it, and it, we definitely had to fight tooth yeah. and claw. And we also, I mean, we also we, we didn't set the bar too low or too high. I mean, we set it at seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah, which um, for people out there, that is very very cheap to make a feature like film. Yes. Like yeah. that is like what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we also did get some additional funding. Okay, cool. I was going to ask yeah. you guys yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Kickstarter yeah. helped us to get an investor excited too. So yeah. they were positives. I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, it's hard to say it's not good for feature films. Veronica Mars made how many millions of dollars? I, I mean, I would say, I would say, you look at that that had like television marketing for many years, Whatever, a built-in dude. fan base, Whatever. like all sorts of stuff. It's, it's a tough. Like, process? I just don't want anybody to no, think right. like, like some process. kid in his basement's like, I'm gonna make up my first feature and I'm gonna fund it on Kickstarter. Yeah, we like, all that's... watched Veronica Mars and we were like, we a buddy of ours is in it, so we were like, we could do this, guys. <laughs> and then we looked at what's the guy's name, the Garden State Brown, uh, Zach, Zach Braff. Zach and then we're like, yeah. Zach Braff can do it. We can do this. Yeah. That's that's next morning. You woke up. We wo- that's make when a I, movie, dude. We yeah. can do well, this. Well, I was seeing Spike Lee's one. And yeah. that I was like, he was what? drunk. We can get <laughs> high and drunk, and we can do this. <laughs> and then we had a little reality set in. But yeah. I think we're all glad we did it, and mm-hmm. we would not do yeah, I mean, it show ones because it's yeah. very stressful. But it yeah. showed the support of the fans. It yeah. showed it showed the executive producer. It showed our, you know our distributor and and people that there's a group of fans out there that wanted to see something that we could make, and it gave yeah. us the hope and gave us the energy to go out there and make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think if if you approach Kickstarter from that point of view, I think it's probably it's ideal. It's the best way to kind of go into yeah. it. Um, but one of the scary things about Kickstarter is if you fail, then you're you fail forever. a failure forever on Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it out doesn't there. go it's away. No. It says there forever. You guys failed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when the anxiety came in. When that's we were, how I feel about Little League when I missed that pop fly. I yeah, you did fail, and you'll never forever. forget about it. I'm really sorry we had to get back into that. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things we spoke about before the interview. I didn't bring it up. <laughs> I am going to come fine. over to Friendsgiving. Mm-hmm. I am doing you sh- that, yeah. and you need to just you know take care of me. I will. I will. What's your drink of choice? Just a lot of something. A lot of something. Okay, well, uh, it's not really the, the what it is. It's, it's not what. It's, it's the quantity, much. not the quality of okay. this guy. Yeah. Quantity, not quality. quality. Yeah. So just uh, yeah, I'll, I'll a forty is quality. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool, Bud Light. Um, there you go. Oh, I do love Bud Light. Bud Light's good. <laughs> who doesn't? Now this show is sponsored by Bud Light. <laughs> yes. We could get so much fun just we from all the like you know name we drops could. we're doing. Um, so you guys think you could? I mean, you kind of said it. You could probably never use GoFundMe. I mean, not GoFundMe, but Kickstarter, Kickstarter. again. 
Would your, I, would your that friends I would, I give could, you money again? No, I don't no. think so. I don't think you can. Yeah. I mean, no. It's just one of those things. I mean, with Reckless, we had another Kickstarter afterwards mm-hmm. that also got funded, luckily. Um, but the idea of getting two Kickstarters through is kind of astronomical. And yeah. it's also very different today than it was two years ago when we did it. Yeah. So is this they were just handing out money to you. <laughs> it all, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to go there. Go on. So, so the bad release, <laughs> the whole process of this, how long ago did it start? Um, over over two over years, two years ago, ago, really. Like it was we, like summer of 2013. Yeah, we, when that's when we started, started talking about it. And then we got into pre-production in like... When? December, sh- January. December, January. We started filming February of 2014. We shot it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, so yeah, so since... The then, summer of 2013 we yeah. started. And now it's coming out winter of 2015. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so wow. it comes at this. It's a I know, very that's long process. Realized. Yeah, we, that's kind of what we realized <laughs> going from the you know production and directing that we had, where it's like you have three days to put out a web series sure. and you write, edit, direct. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's yeah. what he and does. And it's up, and everybody are like, oh, oh yeah. my god, it's so great! And then you do a movie, and it takes two years, and people yeah. will go, wow, you did it so fast. And you're like, yeah, you have no idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no idea. What was fast about what we did? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about the film. I don't know who wants to kind of take this one, but uh, about the film, where the idea came from, and uh, your characters a little bit, I guess. We probably could all. Why don't we sure. start yeah. with you? Uh, we'll start with you. <laughs> okay, about the film. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the film is about um, two roommates, Bobby and Raymond. Bobby roommates. Bobby, Bobby, roommates. 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 Bobby, played roommates. by Patrick. European Raymond, played by myself. Release, yeah. yeah, this is for the international release. <clears throat> Um, and uh, we're we're in a little bit of a bind. We lose a room. We're in a great house, and we we lose our roommate. Um, Who happens to be one of the stars of Reckless? Yeah, Eric Pumphrey, <laughs> star of the online gamer, <laughs> is the other roommate. He is. We lose him, and then we're tasked with having to find a new roommate. So we go through this gauntlet of meeting crazy Freaks, roommates. Weirdos. Yeah, uh, until we meet one uh, beautiful girl who looks innocent enough, and. Um, Boy, were we wrong. Exactly. <laughs> Things take a horrible turn, and then it's uh, kind of this dwindling thing downwards until, uh, you know, uh, it culminates with a pretty big eruption. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of the general movie. I like eruption. Yeah. I like, yeah. I like that's how it's. Well, do you know why I use eruption. the word eruption? Because <laughs> it's kind of sexual. Yeah. It is. It's very well, sexual. Definitely went there, you definitely there. You think about it. Like, yeah. What could, what yeah. Does it eruption. Mean? Yeah, it's a dark comedy, um, and it's got great elements. It's hilarious, it's sexy, it's fun, and. Uh, I go through a table at one point. Oh, that's fun. I yeah. take my shirt off. I take his shirt off. sexy about that? Yeah. This is mm-hmm. this is why yeah. you guys need to watch yeah. the tape. There's watch uh, the there may be there may be a <laughs> sequence. There may be uh, some shrooms eaten in the movie. There might be. Uh, there happen. might be a life size avocado that chases us yeah. through a dream sequence. These things might happen. Exactly. You have to rent it to see. Oh. Um, my character though is Raymond, who's who's uh, kind of the uh, kind of the straight man of the two. Yeah. Um, who's kind of got more of the level head. I the consummate say. nice guy. Yeah, I think he's a nice guy. Thank you. You can. Yes. He's the level-headed. Talk nice guy. about me, please. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Director. Okay. Go. Well, I, 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 you know, you have a great uh, relationship dynamic between these Bobby and Raymond, and you know, I think, I think backstory-wise, they grew up together, kind of do everything together, mm-hmm. and of course, live with each other, and I think they play off each other kind of in that classic like crazy guy, straight guy, kind of Abbott and Costello kind of way, you know? But modernized, if you will. I like that. Yeah. Or uh, Oscar and uh, Felix. Oscar and There's Felix, Oscar yes. Felix yeah, yeah. And Costello. Now, is there any, like, any of them as who they are as real-life people and their characters? Yeah, I, I'm much? the jerk in real life. Okay. <laughs> He's just a really nice I mean, guy. Then you ask, like, where the idea came from. I mean, the writer more or less came up with the concept for the movie, but there are elements in this movie that all come from stories in our real life of bad roommate experiences that we've had or bad relationships that we've had. So there's really? a lot of... Stories. There's a lot of truth There's things to it. in there that I'm not even going to talk about because if you knew that was a real thing, you'd think differently about me. Yeah. Um, but so you're just going to have to guess. <laughs> now I'm going to watch yeah. it and I'm like, this, these are yeah, what these guys are started, like. Yeah. This is what just, talking if you about. DM me, I may. Really? I may. Yeah, no <laughs> friends giving anymore. I'm sorry. I saw sorry. the film. <laughs> Yes, I mean, that was kind of the how we came up with the story was... Yeah. Yeah. I think we tried to... You know, honestly, when we fully 100% were thinking about doing a zombie movie, which... <laughs> and then I think we all kind I of... I still think we should make that movie. We should, but we stepped back and went, for our first movie, let's do what we're used to and what we know we can yeah, do, which comedy. is Reckless Tortuga is a comedy channel. Mm-hmm. He's done, dealt in comedy a lot, and I've dealt in comedy throughout my career as well, so... And the writer is very, mm-hmm. you know... 
You yeah, somebody, and I think yeah. story wise, we were very also like conscious about doing something we could do well within our means. Yeah, right? and I think Not I think like a lot big of car blow ups and car chases. <laughs> right. And, you know. Yeah. I think first time filmmakers makeup. are very <laughs> yeah. ambitious yeah. and want to like you know create the Godfather right off the bat and, yeah. and, and stuff like that. And I think for us, we we wanted to you know we knew we weren't going to go in there with ten million dollar budgets and like trailers for everybody. So we wanted to come up with a story that we could tell really well for the resources. We only we got one trailer and that was for Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> he got the trailer. Yes. yes. It was a really big one. We all had to, we all had to <laughs> That's share what Kickstarter a tent. went to. <laughs> <laughs> Past the we all had to share a tent, but it was okay. No, but I think we did a good job on that because we, did. we didn't have a ton of money and I think we did something within our means. I think that's a great way of saying it. Absolutely. And we really put everything on the screen. like Every penny. What was the full budget for the film? Well, it was it, a SAG it, ultra low budget film, yeah. so it's under two hundred thousand dollars. So wow. it was just under that yeah. two hundred thousand dollar mark. Wow! Like just yeah. squeaked it under there. That's just incredible, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I know one of the biggest things with like independent film and kind of small budget film is distribution. That's right. So you, but it sounded like you guys had that set up before. No, no, you no. didn't. We so had what nothing. was that process like? That was the most stressful process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what we did is. Through some of our representatives, some of our representatives, we and different like th uh, people that we knew, we were able to get with Preferred Content, mm -hmm. which is a sales agent, and they're really good. They did wh what are Zero's some? Dreams of Sushi. Yeah. They, I mean, they're one of the top yeah. independent film sales yeah, agencies like in the world in Hollywood. They're huge. So, so they they were great. And then what you do is you do buyer screenings. Um, we didn't really want to go the festival route because it's not much of a fe it's not a festival mm -hmm. film. It's not. There's nothing brooding about it you know like <laughs> yeah it's just fun and yes. dark and cool and i mean i feel it's really good i think we made the next swingers basically so uh -oh. that's what i'm going no. uh but then you do a buyer screening and you get all these distributors to come and they all if they like it they make yep. you an offer distribute it. and we had a couple and the orchard um was uh -huh. the one that came to us that we were the most excited about because they really deal in this genre of film mm -hmm. and they do it so well yeah. and they're like i mean they're really and their titles and, their titles yeah. that they have out now are amazing i mean um the escort, the, titles, Jason, came the escort the uh, escort digging uh, for fire the overnight the overnight oh, yeah. I, I wanted to see digging for i know what that yeah. is yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> them, um, and they have cartel land cartel yeah. land oh. is their thing what we things we do in the dark is the name of it i always get the name mixed up uh what we do in the shadows what we do in the shadows Things to do in the dark. Close enough. <laughs> anyway, so some amazing, great titles. So we just felt like we we fit with these guys, mm -hmm. and they understood us and understood the film. Because that's the main thing. You have distributors that come to you that you don't feel like they actually understand what this film is. Mm -hmm. and yeah, these guys, they don't care about they don't what care. the film is, yeah. and they legitimately love the movie. Yeah, and we feel like they tell. understood us. Listen, when you're an actor in this city for as long as we've been, mm -hmm. you know when someone's lying to you and when they're bullshitting you. <laughs> and they good. weren't bullshitting us. They <laughs> yeah. really liked the movie, so yeah. it was good. So that's something for actors out there. They'll eventually figure it out, right? You'll yeah. figure out <laughs> when, <laughs> when someone's full of crap. You like to tell when someone's lying to you. I'm still that's trying to figure it out. What have you learned from Hollywood? Just when people are full of crap. I hope you don't think I'm full of No. I'm not. I'm no. <laughs> no, we do not think that. <laughs> cool. So I know the purchase link uh, for this film is up on November 24th. Mm -hmm. Where is that purchase link located? Where can we get that? Where can we find it? Uh, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, uh, Xbox, Xbox PSN, PlayStation, MGO, DirecTV. Come on. Keep going. DirecTV, uh, Time Warner, any of your cable providers is going to be on all pay-per-view platforms, all video-on-demand platforms. Yeah. Uh, and you can also... on. Thanksgiving. Yeah. You can also go to Reckless Tortuga's YouTube page. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the trailer there, and in that trailer there will be a link that you can click through to go and pre-order the movie. Pre-order the movie. Uh, and, and any of your various digital platforms. And that the digital release is on December 1st. That's right. December 1st. So can I watch it on Netflix on de after December 1st? No. 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 Oh, not Netflix. You've got to pay for it first. Yeah. Did you see that? Uh -huh. No. Eventually, <laughs> this is why you guys do yeah. in this yeah. field. Eventually, yes. Yep. You can see uh, it. You eventually, can, sure we don't you know. know. Yes. We don't know if we're going to see it. Yeah. You can see it. Is it at, MC. No. I was like, I was like, really? Is it is it playing no, in any theaters or not? We're having no, an no. extremely oh, yeah, limited actually, theatrical no, release. It's an extremely on as in one one, yes, one screening. One screening. We're doing Monday, screening. Monday, December sorry, November, November 30th, 30th at the Los Fields Three Theater at seven PM in Los Angeles. Um, there will, there's gonna be one screening. You can all the public can come have buy tickets for it? it. I have not seen it. You wanna come to our I would love to come to the screening. It's next Monday night. Yeah. It's you just buy that at the box office. Tickets are ten bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Cool. Ten bucks. Are we gonna be too drunk to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> Are we Maybe we shouldn't be like talking about like, you know, work stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Keep them separate. <laughs> but yeah, the Lost Field is three November thirtieth, seven p.m. So and then December first is, is the, the digital act, release. Is the digital release for you to rent, to rent the movie, and you can buy it 
starting and then December fourth, you'll watch it when you're at home. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. We and just December have a lot of dates that we're throwing out here. Santa comes. Yes, uh, yes. and then Christmas December is December twenty fifth. If you still believe, and then Santa. Star Wars yeah. comes out. Uh, Star Wars comes out the eighteenth. His my birthday's the twentieth. You should go see it on the seventeenth, though, because that's like what all the cool people are. He'll ruin it's it for you. Fact, so exactly. Yeah, he'll see it before Patrick sure sees it. I just ruined Santa Claus see for any of you really young it. viewers as well. Did you read that thing with that lawsuit with that that mother was suing a kid? Because he went to school and told all the other kids in his class that Santa Claus wasn't real, <laughs> like a seven-year-old, and like ruined Christmas for everybody. I'm sorry, at seven, like if yeah. you have a big imagination, awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think another no. kid saying he's not real no. is gonna like, bug chill. you. Parents got to chill. They, they do. definitely do. <laughs> sorry. So I feel like we, anything else about bad rumors you guys want to talk about it? Anything? Uh, yeah, I, I would say you guys are doing other things too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I would say this about Bad Rumies, which is it's a it's a bit of a unique story. It isn't mm-hmm. like your everyday comedy. It isn't your everyday dark comedy. It's it, it it's kind of a fun movie that's a little bit you know different than what you're gonna see out uh, over the Christmas break. It's 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 a fun comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Feel, it, no, I think that's you know, right because and that's something that we kind of all. In our writers' room, our whiteboarding, whatever you call it, sure. we we wanted to make a comedy, but we also all wanted to make something we were really proud of that isn't just like a Marvel movie. Yeah. Like it's not a Marvel movie. It's or, not or it's not a franchise not film. Yeah, just a you know <laughs> toilet humor, and you know I, yeah. I think that we it's written really smart. It's really funny. It's actually I believe it's funny. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, and we worked hard to do that. It does have dark aspects to it, mm-hmm. so yeah. it's more than just your typical. Like it's a great movie that your family's gonna love, but grandma's gonna feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So should yeah. you, you not will, watch you, it with grandma? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, it, my grandma would love this movie. Yeah, it depends yeah. on who she's your also is. drunk most okay. of the time. But. but you can watch it with your parents. <sighs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Or you can watch. I mean, it's as I you, wouldn't. It's I wouldn't as you wish. It is as yeah. you wish. It depends yeah, on your relationship. Sure. Listen, I I was on Christmas Day in a theater with my aunt, uncle, mother, and entire family yep. while watching. What's the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio that just came out? Oh, last two years ago. Uh, um, Wolf of Wall Street. Yes. Oh yeah. no. So my well, my view, done. I'm done. Let I will never watch anything with them again because <laughs> I was like, this is gonna be great. And the first scene is him yep. snorting coke and smacking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's my mom. Well, this is like I gotta go. This was like my youth. I remember this vividly. My parents took me to see Private Parts. Oh. I must have been. That's okay. Tw- no, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is, Patrick. <laughs> I feel that's okay. No, I was twelve years old, maybe. Yeah, that's your too. Okay, I remember being in the theater, which my parents, like, we were like, whatever. Yeah. Sure. To them, it was cool, but it's I just remember. Such a good movie. I remember my dentist walking into the theater, <laughs> and my dentist seeing that the look of disapproval on his face to my parents and me as I'm watching, you know, Howard Stern in a hot in a hot tub with the chick with that's great. Huge that, breast that, I guess mm-hmm. that. Part. There's a lot of raunchy. No, there's a lot of shit in that I movie just that a 12 year old shouldn't so see. Solid sure, that it's yeah. okay. See, I did. I did. Uh, made the mistake. Broke back mountain with my dad. <laughs> no, yeah. Because we, we we like to go see you know all the movies nominated. Yeah, and no, that, that's, that's me not and my dad's no. thing. No, that's not one. I should have. No. Yeah. I. It was terrible. Yeah. But if I would have left, he would have been by himself in a packed theater. Yeah, I think it would have been worse for him. So I I took one for the team. You took it. Well, Jason's like when you and your grandma saw Brown Bunny together. Yeah, right. that was weird. Right? I mean, my grandma <laughs> passed. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. 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 I don't know what this is. I don't get the joke. Uh, Chloe Sevigny. Uh, we'll talk about it after. Yeah, we'll talk about it. That's, that's that's right. <laughs> do, you, do you have any like? The uh, rating was NC like, seventeen. <laughs> no, I uh, I don't have my, my my parents were very cool things. about yeah. watching movies. Like they let me watch pretty much anything. Yeah, uh, I think that's part of the reason that I became a filmmaker is just on the basis that I was exposed to so many movies at a young age. Um, everything from like raising Arizona when I was like seven years old. <laughs> you saw him when you were yeah. Seven? yeah, yeah. Like my my dad, it was it's like something me and my dad would do. We would uh, we would go to movies together, and that was like our thing. So um, so no, I don't I don't have any like it's never been uncomfortable to go see a movie with my parents, and they've always been pretty cool about like the content of the movie and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I, my only going to the movies with my parents story that's kind of sad is I saw Field of Dreams with my father. 
that he was weeping and he cried it was the first time I saw my father cry in Field of Dreams yeah. that, what a sweet at the I end was of literally Field of just talking moment. about Field of Dreams outside because was, I, when I met James Earl Jones I said that's my favorite movie that you've ever been in oh, and it's such I, a great like, movie. I, that was like my thing yeah and my father his father had passed when he was 13 years old and never really got to know oh. him so like that end of that movie and I'll never forget it it was that's the, that experience was probably the only thing that stands out not that me. Sandlot is not like one of my favorite <laughs> movies of all time I'm just saying Field that of James Dreams Earl Jones that James Earl Jones that's right <laughs> Don't, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. It's <laughs> good to know I'm second best. <laughs> Sandlot's my childhood. That, yeah. that movie. I I lived in that same type of neighborhood. Did you? I did. I did. And That's I, cool. we would go and play, and I was really yeah. That, I think everybody has a Sandlot yeah, story. Yeah. Like, What's your Sandlot story? <laughs> San, Sandlot story. He kissed the lifeguard. <laughs> I did. I made out with the lifeguard. No, That's I didn't. A, no, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't really have one. I played no. soccer. <laughs> Oh, you didn't play soccer time? Before, but <laughs> yeah, me, but, not. <laughs> before, but before I met Patrick growing up, though, I had seen that movie uh, countless times. So it's I mean, such that's an amazing one of my, movie. It's yeah, it's one of those American classics that it's one. Of, you know what it is? It's, it's movie, timeless too. It, it, like yeah. our kids will watch it. It's yeah. timeless. Totally. It's yeah. timeless. It's one of those like movies. Your kids? What's that? Like your kids? Like our? Like, like yeah, like our kids. So I'm definitely not going. Apparently, what the what? Wait, you know, we'll talk. Okay, okay. good. We'll talk after. Wonderful. Okay, we'll talk after. Um, yeah, uh, you're saying like. Oh no, no, sorry. No, I was just saying like it's one of those movies that like when there was like a rainy day at school, they would play that movie yeah. instead yeah. of going to lunch right. or something yeah. like that. Like yeah. it's just so much a part yeah, of a everybody's. Movie. And you wanted to watch it. You oh, totally. Like, oh, why are we playing this? Yeah, movie? no, it's such a great movie. This sucks that I was in it because this isn't yeah. how it is for me. How is <laughs> it for you though? Like, like, how many times have you seen that movie? Not very many. Really? Like, like less, like less than. Five? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Definitely less yeah. than five. That's. I mean, I understand, but I've. Yeah. I've seen yeah. parts like, of I've, it. Like, honestly, I've seen it countless times. Like, I could not even tell you how many. Yeah, times. Well, I'll, so I'll many tell times. you. What's it's funny is when I did the Sandlot tour for the twentieth anniversary, mm-hmm. which was about two years ago, we were watching it in ballparks, and we were signing autographs during the screening of it, but it was actually kind of great to see because you could see the, on the jumbotron. I saw, I watched the movie a little bit, and I I went. I haven't seen this movie in twenty years. Yeah, right. Like, that's so cool. Yeah, like I, w- so it was slightly enjoyable. But I feel like to me, I always liken it to Goonies for me, because mm-hmm. that was sort of my sandlot. Yeah, you know, and I could watch that Seven anywhere, of anytime. I could and watch that's it the right thing now. Is, it can, you can catch it in the middle of the movie and you'll watch it. Oh, you know that stop. Yeah, you know it's so funny that you say Goonies it. because actually a lot of people consider Sandlot and the Goonies as Umpire. like. Who it defines your personality, yes. which one you like. Yeah. Yeah. like it's very funny. Yeah. No, I know the, your wife Instagram that jar, the jar yeah. thing. Yeah, is it Sandlot or Goonies? Yeah, yeah. no. Well, so what does it mean if Sandlot's yours? I'm You're not really sure cool. exactly what it. I think I think you're it's a little twisted if it's Goonies. I think Goonies are a little curious. like the darker and Sandlot's I think a little you're bit more. more I think you're more nerdy if you like the Goonies. I feel like you're more of like a pop oh, yeah, culture jock kind of guy. versus nerd. Kind yeah, of it's of jock. Okay. Versus, and like Sandlot's more like American jock. Like, sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm a little bit of a nerd. A little bit. Yeah. I'm well, very much a nerd though, but I see Sandlot all the way. Yeah. Well, Goonies never say die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Goonies never say die. Okay. And yeah. slick yeah. shoes. Okay. <laughs> and that's what I said. Booty trap. <laughs> oh, so much. So much. Oh my goodness. Anytime anyone spills anything, I go, what is that? What is that? That's my line. Oh. oh shit! Have you watched the special features of the Goonies to see where it's like where are they now and it shows you what they're all doing? No. And like I Chunk is like a entertainment lawyer. Oh, that's amazing. Good for and, Chunk. Yeah, and like the Sean Astin's and, uh, doing his thing. Yeah, Jenna, Data is like an entrepreneur. It's like it's very funny that's to awesome. see them where that they is, are now. Yeah, it's cool. He's really like and like Chunk's like really slender and wears like s- like really flashy suits. <clears throat> it's really funny. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Fantastic! Thank you. <laughs> no, no, you learn something true. new every day. You do, you do. When you when you turn into I Talk movies. So, as your first time feature film yeah. producers makers, biggest kind of words of advice, thing you wish you would have known um, for people out there who want to do this. Hmm. Gosh, these are good questions. That's a really good question. Thank you. I guess my word of advice would be: don't think you know everything, and allow the process to teach you. Would probably be. Like, don't get overwhelmed with trying to know. Like, something that stopped me for so long from ever trying to make my first feature film was just feeling like I didn't know how to do it Mm -hmm. or feeling like I couldn't do it because I didn't know enough. And 
once I finally got there, I realized it's it's not about knowing everything. It's mm-hmm. it's about knowing what you know and and staying true to yourself and uh, and and just going with what you feel is best to communicate the story. I would say that would be my advice because because that it's that's what scared me and, and stopped me for so many years. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's really beautiful. And you want to follow that? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess like my beautiful advice would be, um, you know. Because I, I don't want to come down no, to like, you, such a low level on my next one. <laughs> uh, I would say there's that there, everywhere you turn, someone will say something can't be done or will give you a no. And one thing that we did and we had each other to you know, support each other through the whole process is that just keep going. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel and don't listen to all the naysayers. I mean, that's kind of what I've really learned through Hollywood through the years is it's up to you and I feel like we did that because we kind of did the impossible I mean to yeah. make a movie with the money that we had in Hollywood and then to be lucky and you know be in the position that we're in is pretty great yeah. and you know hopefully people love it that's the most important thing and hopefully it does well but I, I guess it would just be everyone will tell you no um, and you can I don't know ignore them you know mm-hmm. and just follow your dreams <laughs> follow your dreams and then my other one is post-production and pre-production is there's a lot <laughs> you don't yeah. realize but there's so much more to movie making than just the month of filming and that's what I learned like oh my god there's so many people and mm-hmm. so many things that go into making a movie so. and you guys shot this in a month 18 days yeah. 18 days yeah oh wow 18 but days shoot over a month because yeah. you have breaks and you know yeah cool mm-hmm. what about you I would say you know uh, to have a viewpoint and to to stick to your viewpoint and don't waver from that like have an artistic viewpoint and an idea and, and know what you want to do and don't let anybody else's ideas that don't contribute to that idea come in and <clears throat> excuse me I'm getting emotional no um, and <laughs> let it come in fix that and, and change that I say that was the biggest thing because you, you see that a lot with artists where they have viewpoints and ideas and, and things they want to communicate and then other people come in and kind of squash that and make you lose track of what your original vision was. When if you're going to do an independent film, yeah. stick to your guns, right? Yeah, like, that's nobody the point. else can can control you. That's really. the point. Yeah, I think that's it's like point. it's it's really about fighting for what you believe will, you know, communicate. Yeah, and to me I think I think that's what separates great films from okay films is when you have filmmakers or a filmmaker who have a specific viewpoint and vision and they actually execute that without letting it get tainted or yeah, go askew. Yeah, I mean, if you're making an independent movie, you might as well do it the way you want That's to. Right. It's, the only, right. it's the only opportunity you're ever going to really yeah. have to do that. It's the upside. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely the I mean, upside. Even look at Project Greenlight. Like, yeah. it's that's a pretty low budget movie, and you have Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, who, as far as EPs, are probably the best you could ever get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then you're still listening to everyone, and even I mean, all the people that he's listening to are really cool. Yeah. Most of them, except for the line producer. Yeah, oh, that one. The producer. Did you watch Project so, Greenlight? I've started this this current season because yeah. I'm, I'm in the process of making it's my first so film. Good. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations! I've started now watching it. Well, it's it's great. It's educational. <laughs> it's not. It's a very big budget. I would say. To, well, yeah, but even still, though, but it shows you. It get sh- someone. It does. Like, you got to You got to work with people that you. Or trust well with and that you trust <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, because that's whether the, the director with that, with or the that. producer were right they hated each other and that and was that, horrible and that causes and you, you that will, will show itself on the screen and yeah. we yeah. never that. we would fight and we would you know have arguments but we'd get over them fast mm-hmm. and I would say 95% of the time we were there on the same page working with each other yeah, yeah. you know and that is yeah. That's what you got to watch out for. That line producer was so rough. I don't know. She care. wasn't the line producer. She was the no, line producer. No, no, no. She was the line producer, she too. She was the line producer. She was line producer. Was she? Yes. They she just called her a producer, but she, she was, was the, the line producer. producer. Yeah. And I don't mind saying it because I, 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 never want to. I never want to work with her. So I don't care if she sees this. I will never work with you. You're a horrible person. <laughs> horrible. I think. I think when you <laughs> with all the love in my heart, <laughs> peace and love and hugs. Oh, yeah. That's what she says. You are a horrible person. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep going. That's yeah, I'm done. I've said. I've said it. I've said it. I've said it. I've said what I, I would to say, say. I would say. You know, another thing to think about when you know, if you are making your first feature film, is to consider that there's going to be a lot of things that you will not have control over, mm-hmm. and that you will not be able to oversee every step of the way, and decisions will be made, not all of the time with, you know just your interests Mm -hmm. so it's important to put people in a position that do have your interests in mind because it's impossible especially as a director 
to manage everything. Yeah. Like it all happens kind of, and it's a, I equate it to like a, 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 a train mm-hmm. that is moving on the tracks and you're either on the train or you're off the train. Um, can and I, it's going to move either way. Can mm-hmm. I get on the train? You, you're, he you're wants more than on the yeah. train. I can, uh, Jump on. See, I just I just play the Frozen song every morning. Let it go. Yeah, let it go. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a big one too. It's also let it go. Fight your battles. You, you know, pick, pick your, your battles. battles. Yeah, for pick sure. your battles because yeah. you can't fight every one of them. For sure. So besides bad roomies, what are you guys doing right now? What's He's coming up for you guys? He's doing a film with that line producer coming up. Really? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they're I'm in talks for them. Star Wars Episode Ten, yeah. Yeah. and when I say talks, I mean I'm talking to my wife about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am. I'm in talks as well. Oh, good. Else. Oh, good. Yeah, we're talking. A I'm talking JJ Abrams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I, you, we all have kind of various projects, I think, but I think we're all so excited and focused on making this uh, and getting this out to the public, yeah. Yeah. and and really, you know. Making sure everybody gets to see this this kind of fun little small movie that we yeah. got to make yeah. that we're real excited about. It was interesting. I was listening to, and then we can relate to this, an interview with uh, Seth Rogen on uh, Howard Stern, mm-hmm. which we were talking about. And he was saying, um, like, for him, more importantly than how the movie does or even makes money, it's the anxiety leading up to the movie is just that you want people to see it. Yeah, I just want like, people to see it. Even if they saw it for free, I wouldn't care. I just want people to see it. Yeah. And, and, and like what we made, so... I mean, yeah, I, you know, I, on. being on the internet for so long, one thing that I learned is I don't care if somebody hates what I do or loves what I do. Mm-hmm. I care when they don't care. Like, mm-hmm. if they're just indifferent about yeah, it. If yeah. they're just like, hmm, that's the thing that kills me. I would rather somebody hate what I do yeah. than them go, hmm. At least they're seeing it, they're putting eyes on it. Yeah, and it, it's invoking it. a that's response. And I think, yeah. I think the only intention behind making anything, especially in, like, film or television or the art. internet art in general <laughs> is to communicate and I think yeah. if you don't actually do that ef- effectively you failed yeah, so I, I don't yeah. care if people hate the movie yeah. I don't care if they love it I just care if they like it one yeah because the whole the reason why we're I don't on this want it game is to entertain people yeah mm-hmm. so we just want to make sure that we're accomplishing that and that we're, and under- so and we're much, entertaining people and so much focus was put on making this movie for an audience yeah. and not this isn't this isn't any of our personal story that like, like we sweated and wanted, Although some you know, of his personal story was apparently <laughs> sprinkled but, a lot of us, but we sprinkled in. <laughs> this movie was made to entertain an audience, and it and and from the ground up was intended to be seen and to be enjoyed. So nice. I think I think that's nicely what said. For. Yeah. Nice, dude. <laughs> so go out and enjoy it, or enjoy it from your own home. Yes, by yes. By purchasing it on November twenty fourth, tomorrow, that's Tuesday. Right. Or the digital release on December first. That's yeah. right. Where wow, can that's tomorrow? Yeah, yeah that is, <laughs> it's tomorrow. 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 Oh my gosh, <laughs> our so, movie comes out tomorrow. Yeah. Ish. Um, Ish. How does that you feel? can buy our movie tomorrow. How does that feel? Um, like your first to be honest, feature film. I'm, I've gotten to the point now where I'm just numb because uh-huh. the, I'm so overwhelmed with anxiety that I've passed through the realm of anxiety to numbness. I think right. I just got nervous. Actually, did you on your show? I just yeah. got yes. a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so, sleeping yeah. uh, for days, but that's because I have a baby. Yeah. So. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> thank you, thank you. No, it's 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 very exciting. It's very you were very nervous. We've never done this before, so. Uh, we're so excited to yeah. see what happens. Yeah, and it's like at this level, you can't really call your friends and your family anymore to, to help <laughs> you be success. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, it's like, up to. They've already donated all their money to they, you. <laughs> they know they can do. It's out there in the ether for the yeah. the world. Yeah, the yeah. world to enjoy. Exactly. Awesome. Well, where can we find you guys? Um, kind of on social media, on the internet, follow you, yes. stalk you. Where uh, can we find you? Can you? Add um, Twitter <laughs> at, at Tommy Savis or on Instagram at, at Tommy Twos. Uh, Instagram and Twitter at Patrick Renna. That makes it easier. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just my name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's P A T R. Do it. You can spell it. You can do it. It's fine. <laughs> Two N's and Hopefully, they're like putting it on the yeah. screen right below you right now. So. Uh. And funny, he's at Patrick Renna too. Oh, so you are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm at Tommy Savage. That's yeah, right. At Patrick Renna. Uh, uh, Patrick. Yeah. No, uh, at Reckless Tortuga uh, on Twitter and on YouTube, Reckless Tortuga. Yeah. So subscribe to Reckless Tortuga. Find that That's channel, right. you yeah. guys. That's right. mm-hmm. Support independent films. Thank you. Yes. See bad roomies. That's right. And yeah, you guys can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Keaton Markey. I keep it simple too. There you go. Sometimes like I need to spell it because mm-hmm. it's a weird name. Hey, follow for a follow or what? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Ooh, follow, follow, follow for a follow. Follow, follow. follow. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's so, do it. And right now, thank you guys so much for thank talking to Thank you. Thanks for having us. Awesome. You guys are awesome. And yeah, see you next time on After Buzz. I mean, not Pop. After Buzz. Popcorn Talk. I talk yeah. movies. Yeah. Ta ta. <laughs>
from producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.